But as we enter a new era combining high technology with the demands of global economic trade, we are entering into a unique stage of history. Water, which is the source of life itself, instead of being common and universal to everybody because we all depend on it, profit is made out of the running of and the delivery of water to people and to to communities those that have the ability to pay will have access to the water those who do not have the ability to pay will go without and therefore it's a life and death situation in the final analysis on the basis of profit Thank you very much and it's a great honor to be on the stage with you. I want to talk comrades and friends about uh, a global water crisis in which we know that the world is actually running out of water. And that wasn't supposed to happen, it wasn't supposed to be able to happen because we were all taught back in, I don't know, grade three or six or whatever that there's a, fi there's a cycle. When it rains, the water falls from the clouds down all the way to the ground. It soaks into the ground and then the grass and trees grow. Sometimes there's so much water underground that lakes and rivers just pop up like when you squeeze a box of apple juice. The rivers carry the water back to the ocean. Inside the ocean, the water floats up to the sky as clouds again. Then the wind pushes the clouds towards the land and it rains again. This all happens over and over forever and ever. How is our water being polluted? Agriculture uses chemicals to increase farming productivity. Ironically implemented to counter a diminishing water supply, these chemicals pollute the groundwater. Automobile gas emissions pollute the clouds. But perhaps the most damaging culprit is industry. Water pollution has been linked to the rising miscarriage rates in women, lower sperm counts in men, and it is so globally severe that the Malaysian government proposed the death penalty for anyone caught contaminating water. This is the, uh, the most uh, polluted river in the United States. Um, there's active uh, polio, uh, tuberculosis, hepatitis. Well, we try and, and reason with the aliens and you know, tell them what's in the water and try and get them out. None of the agents are going to get in that water to get any of these aliens. They're just contaminated. Um, we have a gate that we deploy across the river down the ways a little bit, and uh, we'll deploy that gate, and then they'll all pretty much go back into Mexico. We already have a um, battery of shots that we, we take here um, at the local hospital. It's about 18 different shots for if any agent falls in that water to keep from getting contracting something. Contamination and pollution of the water systems is creating cholera and, and, and water diseases are killing more children today than malaria or AIDS or even wars themselves. And the wetlands would normally have been a, a process whereby there would have been some uh, cleansing of that taking place. It goes through uh, the, the wetlands and it uh, comes out more purified into the river systems, etc. But what happens when the wetlands are destroyed, where we poison a certain amount of water that can never really be fully recycled? What we now know is that we are polluting and depleting this finite stock of fresh water so fast that we're now mining the groundwater faster than it can be replenished. It rains. The water hits the ground and percolates into the soil, collecting underground into what are known as aquifers or groundwater. But how much of our finite supply of water is underground? We can only estimate, as there is no reliable method to accurately measure, which is why our growing dependency on groundwater is such an urgent concern. <laughs> 